Throughout my years in VR, I've come across all sorts of VR folks, and with my 77,000 hours of Steam VR, not, not really. And my interactions with the VR community, I've come to see quite a few trends. If you like VR, you'll pretty much fit into one of seven categories of VR user. Almost no exceptions, although you might fall into multiple here. There is some overlap. So which ones are you? The first category in probably the oldest group here, both in terms of one of the first VR user groups and in age of the actual group, is the Elite Dangerous Grandpa. This guy bought VR back in 2017, played a few games, then downloaded a game called Elite Dangerous, and they've never been the same since. Thousands of hours later, and Elite Dangerous Grandpa has more hours in VR than 20 users combined, has mastered using hands-on throttle and stick better than Maverick flying his F-14, and probably has more space flight training than a NASA pilot. The crazy thing about Elite Dangerous Grandpa is that they probably weren't even gamers before. And they're just that, the grandpa, the oldest of this entire VR user group. But something about mining rocks for hours and hours and hours just became appealing. But hey, I don't blame him. Why spend your retirement watching football and infomercials when you could be in space 10 hours a day That with your new job that only pays in interstellar credits? So we went from the oldest group, but next we have the youngest group of VR user, the Rec Room Squeaker. This is probably the easiest group to find in the wild because literally all you have to do is load up Rec Room and go into Rec Room. Within seconds, you'll hear the squeaker in their natural habitat. But warning here, if you turn on your microphone and you even resemble someone that's post-pubescent, the squeakers may become extremely territorial and you'll be attacked with insults like boomer. <laughs> this group of kids love VR, but what they love even more is crying when you smack them down in paintball. However, there's an elite group of Rec Room squeakers that have put so much time into the game that laser tag almost becomes unfair for people like me. And they'll spend dozens of hours getting the top scores in Rise of Jumbotron. Usually, these kids are the cool ones. And as much fun as it is to make fun of Rec Room squeakers, it's usually just a group of Josh Dub loving VR consumed kids that are passionate about headsets. And they'll definitely remind you where their no no square is. And really, they're just the next generation of a later category the VR chat bro. But we'll get onto that in just a second. First, we have the Beat Saber. Yo, Beat Saber bro, have you played Half-Life Alex yet? N no, no, uh, been playing Beat Saber. Uh, um, what about Boneworks? It's actually, it's actually pretty great. Does it, does it have blocks? What about, uh, Sabers? Uh, no. What about Star Wars Squadrons, yeah? Look, if it doesn't have PP, I'm not interested. <laughs> And that's the Beat Saber. It doesn't matter what game comes out, doesn't matter what's going on, this distant relative of the Osu no lifer practically has a VR headset for Beat Saber and Beat Saber only. A freaking Half-Life game could release, but it don't matter, it don't have blocks. How am I supposed to play a game that don't have blocks? So the hardcore Beat Saber group, or what I like to call PP chasers, have become so good at this game that high-level Beat Saber play and what actually comes with the game are almost completely different. And the skill ceiling just keeps rising with new maps. If there is one section of the VR community that is ridiculously hardcore and would risk their bodies, controllers, and monitors to be the best, this is it. And they have likely dabbled in other VR rhythm games because, well, we all know there's a lot lot of those. But at the end of the day, it's not Beat Saber and there ain't no blocks. Now we've got my personal favorite category, the VR chat bro. Yeah, I may work at McDonald's and my car has a flat tire and needs an oil change and I live with my divorced mom and I have like two dollars to my name, but I've got Vive trackers, Valve Index, and alcohol tonight, so no matter how that my reality is, virtual reality is about to be popping because I'm getting up. The VR chat bro may be 20 years old and have an alcohol problem, but at least they have real friends in VR that they can party with every single night and they don't have to worry about COVID. Plus, you could wear the same clothes multiple days in a row and no one would even know because although your t-shirt may be a little sweaty, no one can smell you in VR. Plus, you look pretty fly in virtual off-white and supreme. Common conversations often relate to how much you drank last night, ERP, and how bad VR chat's performance is, and how you're getting 15 FPS while in a 20 million poly avatar while looking at a mirror. 
most often sighted while laying down in full body tracking, often in the Void Club. Which reminds me, a bonus category, sister to the VR chat bro, is the VR chat ho. Look, doesn't matter if you're male or female or somewhere in between, these people get full body tracking, a uh, voluptuous avatar, and immediately become what I like to call a full body thotty. Whether in a club or public worlds, this group just loves to dance and will dance on anyone or anything. Not gonna lie, I've uh, I've been there, done that, and uh, I love them. I love it. VR chat would not be the same without it, and it's part of the culture, and I love it. Taking a far left turn is the pro gamer. These guys haven't played much of VR chat or rec room. In fact, social VR isn't even really much of an interest to this group. All the pro gamer cares about is dunking on fools in Pavlov, onward, contractors, Echo Arena, you name it. These people spend hundreds of hours learning every in, out, and exploit possible in competitive games and are sure to use them. You've likely encountered many of them if you pop into something like Onward for the first time. You'll know it too because you'll feel like you're the only one that doesn't know what you're doing. <laughs> However, this is a hardcore group that has no mercy and never aims down sights because turns out, in VR, you don't actually have to aim down sights to shoot your shot and you'll only be wasting your time if you do so. And VR is special as well because a lot of these players are esports hopefuls or actual esports teams, but you'll probably run into them because, well, player populations are low and uh, they're always on playing the game. And you'll probably remember their names because you'll be seeing it a lot while you're respawning after getting killed by them. <sighs> Next, we have the Quester. You don't have a PC and you're proud. Anytime someone like me mentions using a pulley system for my Valve Index and the wire, this group feels inclined to comment, laughs in Oculus Quest. However, for the Quest users that do have a PC, they have become an awesome modding community and turned their cheap VR headsets that does everything you want it to, decently that is, into an expensive VR headset that does everything you want it to, decently. Their favorite YouTube channel is probably BMF, and their most used application on their PC is probably Virtual Desktop. And you likely own a router that costs more than your actual VR headset. But no matter how many problems or issues the Quester runs into, their resourcefulness and r slash Oculus Quest always comes through clutch, even when their own phone processors and their headsets don't. Another common trait of the Quester is the eternal defense of the Quest hardware. You know, I can't even tell the difference between 72 and 90 Hertz. And in fact, the head strap's quite comfortable. It's the only headset that fits my big brain. You know, and who cares about the screen door effect? I like OLED over LCD any day. I like seeing the black, I like seeing the color, okay? <laughs> this group will be eternally burned by the fact that their quest has been made nearly irrelevant by a cheaper, faster Quest 2, and the feels bad man meme will circulate through the community until the original quest is no longer supported. <laughs> now, our last category is the developer. These guys spend more time with the headset on their forehead than actually on their face. Whether because of a passion for VR or flat screen game development has become way too saturated, these are the guys and gals that are pushing VR forward and they know it. They may eat instant noodles and peanut butter sandwiches every day because of the razor thin margins, but it's about the long haul. And even though their VR game that they worked on for years and years may only sell 100 copies, that's 100 more copies sold than if the game wasn't made. This group have their mind mind, body, and souls on the line for the success of VR, and there's no one who wants VR to succeed more than the developers, of course. The goal of a developer is to turn Marushan into steak one day, and to have a badass VR game to show for it that people love. So there's the seven type of VR users that you'll meet. Of course, there may be more, and if there are, then you should tell me about them in the comments. Maybe if there's enough demand, I'll make another one of these to cover more types of VR users. And if you fall into any of these beautiful categories, I wanna know just how <laughs> hashtag relatable this was, if at all. The VR community is amazing and diverse and full of some really interesting people, and that's part of the reason why I love it so much. I know this is a new video format, but if you if you hate it, then I don't know, just let me know. if you. If you love it, then really let me know with the you know like button and stuff. <laughs> I do want to thank all of my Patreon supporters. You guys bought me this wonderful green screen. <laughs> you make all of this possible, like this video, of course. And I want to thank all of the Omegas, especially like 2080 Ti, Benji, Daniel, Fusion Oak, Gecko86, 
HCG Randon, KRA Julian, Ronzarelli, That Brock Guy, Tristan Sloan, True Killer, and Very Evil Shadow. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.